for a long time, I would straight up deny that that had been a part of my life, even though it was like such a big part of my life from being 14 to like 22 or whatever. Yeah. But I'd had such a gnarly time with it. Like, like socially, it was like being a girl writing graffiti back at that time. If it, there was like so few, you know, and I was really young. Like mm-hmm. I was like, a, like literally a child. And it was like, uh, really for lack of a better term, like pretty heavy and like very traumatic, um, socially for me. And so like, by the time I was like, fuck this shit, fuck all these people. I like, didn't want even to admit to anybody or even to myself that like my way of dealing with it was just like leaving it in the dust. I've done that a couple times with a couple different things, but now that I'm like grown, I'm an adult. I'm like 38. You know what I mean? Now it's like the memory of that has really softened and it was such a big part of me growing up and like making me who I am that I can like talk about it. Yeah. You know what I mean? We could talk about it. We could laugh about it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I, uh, I remember cause I wasn't supposed to be painting when I came to New York. Obviously I was cased up in Pittsburgh. Yeah. And so like, I wasn't, I, I really wasn't trying to paint, but then I, I, I think, um, I felt like it was chill because it's not like you, you weren't like gung ho, like trying to do like crazy spots or anything like yeah. that. Like we were just like, yeah, like it's something fun to do or whatever, but we did get it. We got a couple of good spots in. I also like towards that time, like I was trying to paint with people who I liked as friends. Yeah. You know what I mean? Who weren't just going to be like, um, somebody that I could do some splashy spot with for like the cred or whatever. Like I really just wanted to paint with people who I wanted to hang out with. Mm -hmm. And you were definitely one of those people. And there was like a handful of others who I was like actually legitimate friends with, not just like painting partners with, you know what I mean? Anybody you want to shout out? No. Okay. cool. (laughs) Yeah. No. Cause I was, when, when you were talking about, when you were talking about the, uh, the trauma of the situation, I was like, damn, I'm sure that there are people that you could like dox right now, but because like being for, like, like statutory rape, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Like, straight, yeah up. straight up. You yeah. Know what I mean? And like, I think about that and it's just like, shit, like, I don't know. Like I, I definitely, and, and you're not the only female writer that I've painted with, but I definitely have like felt like in an empty empathetic way or whatever for your situation just being in the culture because it's obviously like a male dominated culture but it's not like a collected like the 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 males that dominate the culture are not like (laughs) i don't know i don't know how to say what i'm trying to say you know what i'm talking about though where it's just like be especially being like so young fuck like dude thinking about it like being like 15 16 17 yeah and like the places that you would go the places i would go like the people that i'd be rolling with who were like straight up grown adults yeah you know it's like it's so weird to think back i mean you know i i made my own choices for sure and like if i was to go back i wouldn't do it any differently because then i wouldn't be the person that i am today and you know like most people who have any semblance of self-awareness i definitely hate myself a decent amount of the time, but like, I wouldn't ever do it again. Um, differently. Oh, okay. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it differently. Okay. Necessarily. You know, Um, you tricked me there for a minute. I know. Sorry. (laughs) Um, but it is crazy to like think about also everything back then. I mean, stuff has shifted, but you know, like tattooing was different than hardcore was different than punk was different than like all these kind of like, subcultures um that are all male dominated there was definitely a different dynamic graph though is like the rowdiest yeah of them all Mm because it's like the most unchecked you know what i mean for better or for worse and you didn't like i i mean i might i might be like i don't remember you having female like writer friends though that you were getting down with back then i had a couple you did yeah yeah i mean i i was friends with mia who was from Brooklyn and she was around for a long time. And this girl, um, finesse who was around. Um, and then like new, I I painted a bunch. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like we, we painted together quite a bit. Word. Um, but 
there was just wasn't like a lot of I don't know there just wasn't that many girls yeah you know and also like I think that as a younger person like a younger girl in a male dominated culture like and this is something I think about a lot and same thing with tattooing you're not like the culture doesn't really set up women to be supportive of other women it sets up like a scarcity mindset where it's like no you can you have to be the only girl because if there's another girl she's gonna take something away from you that Mm. you worked so hard for you know which is like just internalized misogyny really and you're like getting tricked by these like cultural dynamics and i've thought about that a lot like i could have been in my younger years like looking for more women to like bandwidth basically you know what i mean i would have had a better time yeah yeah, for sure (laughs) you know (laughs) probably um and that's like something that i think about you know but it's like hindsight is 2020 sure uh so when i met you yeah let's say it's 2009 2010 you're pretty much done with graph we did a couple spots you were heavy into tattooing and i would say that like you were already you were already like i mean how many years did you have under your belt at that point I think I started working at Flyright in like 2005. Yeah. Because I graduated high school in 2004. So it must have been 2005. And then uh, maybe like two years. Yeah. I've been tattooing for two years. It's maybe. it's funny because I like we've always had this dynamic where I sort of feel like like you're like an older sister in a way. <laughs> like I feel like you're like, but you're really only a year older than me, which is funny to think about. But How I old are you? I'm 36. I'm two years older than you. Well, I graduated in 05, okay. so you know okay. what I mean? <laughs> but, but uh, you know, I remember, like, you saying something to me that actually stuck with me, like, throughout all of the years. You were, you were the first person that, because you know when you're in the thick of it, when you're, like, really involved, your, your, your brain is, like, co-opted in a way, where, like, you can't see beyond graffiti. And I remember talking to you. And listening to what you would say about it, because I valued like your experience, you were a New York City writer. You know what I mean? I'm like an out of town. <laughs> I think I'm, that's giving me a lot of grace. But <laughs> no, but 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 uh, like I'm an out of town or whatever. You you're like involved in this culture. All of your friends are legit New York City writers. And I remember one time I was working on a sketch when we were both working at Flyright, and you came up and you're like, "Yeah, you're really good at graffiti. It's just unfortunate that you're that's the thing that you're good at because this shit sucks." You know what I mean? <laughs> And it, it was like the first time that like somebody like like just straight stunned you for yeah, the thing yeah, that for... you like to do. <laughs> what an asshole! Like no, but it was it was it was, it was so really funny. good because it it made a really strong impression <laughs> on me. I was like, oh, there's people that I like and respect who don't fuck with this shit. Who yeah, who can say it from a position so of bitter. no? It was it was excellent. Like I, I appreciated yeah. it, which is part of the reason why I think it stuck with me because I'm like. Oh no, there are people that, that live out this experience. It's a phase for them. They get to the other side of it and they have a different perspective on it. Sure. Like I, knowing that at that age, uh, like 21 or whatever was ultimately beneficial for me. Yeah. Like, well, uh, you're welcome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, for sure. And, um, I, I mean that, that, that was just a little story that I wanted to throw in there. I forgot I had like some, that was like leading into some question or whatever, but just kind of reminiscing about that time you were having, yeah, Oh you're a successful tattooer at that point already. And I feel like your career has only kind of gone up since then. Like, I don't know. What do you think? Um, just to touch on what you just said, you know, I was telling somebody who I worked with in Utah, he was like, just kind of like learning to tattoo my friend Tyler. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to give you a piece of advice that I, I don't know that somebody else is going to give you. Um, it's an unpopular opinion, but if I can tell you one thing about tattooing, it's that when you get good enough at it and like established and you know what you're doing, find something else to love. Mm. And I think that that's true of anything really, like any all-consuming thing in your life, like whether it's graffiti or tattooing or, you know, whatever, subcultural music or... Um, some kind of sport because if you only have the one thing dude it will fucking eat you and kill you you know like nobody who is just doing graffiti like 
all the way into their middle age and that's the thing that they have it's it's hard to be happy and you can see people who like it's like eating them up and it's the same thing with a lot of tattooers and some people that's obviously like not across the board you know what i mean like some people are like that and they're consumed and they're the best at it and and that's going to be their lives and they love it you mm-hmm. know but a lot of people like it it like eats them away you yeah know? and so to have something else i think is important I, I that's another thing that i feel like you and i both share like when we get into something we go we go like deep and yeah. whatever mm-hmm. it is and um it's funny because i've over the years there have been people who have noted that you followed me on instagram and been like how do you know this person like i know of this person either as a tattooer <laughs> or like when you started doing the climbing like oh, yeah, there were a couple of people that were like you know you know, Marina, in a way, like the climber, like I was like, what the fuck? Like you, you had clout, like in multiple like avenues That's or funny. whatnot. Um, when did you start getting into, I'm going to hop around like That's crazy fine. or whatever, yeah. but like, when did you get into climbing and like, how much did that take up? Like all of your energy? How long did that? Cause we just, you just recently told me that you aren't going to be climbing as much or whatever. You're not as into it as you were. Yeah. I started climbing when I, after I moved to Richmond. So I left New York and like, 2011 or 12 um and then uh once i moved there i started climbing at a gym there and then i got really into it and started climbing outside a bunch and then i think in 2014 i like left richmond and lived in a van that for mad long so you the last time we actually saw each other you had you just stopped doing that. Like you had been living in a van. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You I was about some to move crazy... to Utah. So yeah. that's like all the shit that I feel like, I don't know if it still is or whatever, but for a minute people were like heavy on that tip of like trying to live in a van. Yeah. Hella people getting into climbing. Yeah. I like, think people are still doing that. They are? I think so. I mean, it's funny because like, and I, I talk about this with some people at times. Um, When I started climbing, because I've been climbing for like 10 or 11 years and it was like, not cool quite yet like it wasn't commonplace in like popular culture um and so people were like climbers were very much climbers you know there wasn't tons of gyms in cities and like it was like nerds basically people Mm -hmm. who were like climbing nerds um and now you go to a climbing gym and you're like do I know that person? Cause they look like a graffiti writer, but yeah, they're yeah, just yeah. like a climber because everybody's wearing Arc'teryx and everybody's wearing like the right shoes and like the cool pants and stuff. And it's, it's pretty funny. Um, it's yeah. like definitely shifted, but, um, I thought Arc'teryx was going to go away. It didn't. Yeah. Yeah. Like I remember it back from like, like hell along. Me ago. too. I was like, do you remember like rat, how easy it was to rack Arc'teryx yeah. jackets? Like yeah. I had a, huge collection that got lost in a storage oh, unit. Oh, shit. Yeah. yeah. Um, should we talk racking? Do you want to talk racking? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, you don't have any, you don't have any convictions, right? Like anything that stuck after all said and done. You do? I was actually, it's so funny to talk about this. Like, I know we don't have camera. to. No, too. it's fine. I actually, I really don't care. I'll tell whoever, anybody at this point, it's <laughs> old. Um, I was actually like nervous that I wasn't going to be approved for my visa to the UK because I have a pretty like long record. Um, um, did you, did you enjoy racking for the sport of it at all? We never really talked about this before. Now that I think about it. Yeah, I guess not. I mean, like, were you actually into racking or was it like, just like a, a facet of graffiti that you were getting into? <laughs> Um, <laughs> I was going to try and be indiscreet yeah, yeah, yeah. about this, you know, um, it was, I mean, obviously like it started with racking paint, you know, it started with like racking things that you could then return to get a gift card for paint. And then there was a scheme when I was in high school where you would like, it was like Xenadrin pills, um, stackers. You would like get those from Dwayne Reed and bring them to like a vitamin shop who would give you cash, you know? And so I would like- Damn, you could get cash. Yeah, straight cash. And so I would like buy my little like Chanel sunglasses in high school, you Mm -hmm. know? Um, and, And then I like chilled on it kind of for a while. But when I was a little bit older, um, the like crew of people I was rolling with were skilled 
You know what yeah. I mean? And it was like, it was like to make money, like straight up.